Praise the Lord. Impart. Impart. We are getting to the hour. The hour of power and the hour of God's grace. But before we bring our Father in the Lord to the podium, the scripture is fulfilled as the Lord has spoken that I will give you and help meet. And this has been truly fulfilled. Our Father in, in the Lord is with our mother, a dedicated mother who is given to the cause of godly womanhood, a mother of sons and daughters, a, a, a mama ready to see our daddy fulfill his, his, his God-given mandate in the house of God with a standing ovation and a clap offering. You want to welcome our mama in the Lord, Mama Esther Kumui. You are welcome, Ma. We are happy and glad to have you here in Ghana. God bless you. God bless you. And now, I am honored to introduce a father who continues to make great strides and indelible marks in the corridors of Christianity and beyond. An apostle, a teacher, a preacher, a prophet, a pastor, a minister who embodies the diversities of the grace and administrations of the Spirit of Christ. He has conquered the struggles of the academy, a university dawn, a mathematician whose mark still remains in the University of Ibadan. He's able to break the, 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 the calculus and the, and the structures of the scripture into, into the basic understandable form. You want to welcome the defender of the faith, the preacher of holiness, a father of the young people. We welcome you, daddy. As I succeed, you will succeed. As I make progress, you will progress. And today we are ready for you, sir. Praise God bless the you, Lord. Sir. I thought a gunner's voice could be higher, higher, higher than where I'm coming from. Thank you very much, Pastor. Let me repeat what he said. And I say it to you. As I succeed, you will succeed. As I progress, you will progress. Every hindrance will be taken out of your way in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we well, thank you. Your children are here. Your creatures are here. You created them. You invited them, you saved them for a purpose. And Lord, I pray the purpose of heaven to rise up, to go forth, to go to the highest height, fulfill it in every life in Jesus' name. Make this day the beginning of a new level of success in every life. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down in your victory. Today, very briefly and quickly, I come to tell you that God has a purpose for you, a plan for you, and he has planned your progress. You will progress in Jesus' name. We're talking about higher heights. And I'm talking to you on pressing upward to higher heights. Pressing upward to higher heights. The Lord has assured you through his word and through Christ a savior, your savior, that he has higher heights for you. But then he wants you to press upward, not to fall downward, but to press upward to that higher height. It tells us in Isaiah chapter 55, Reading from verse 8, Isaiah chapter 55, and looking at verse 8, he says, My thoughts 
and not your thoughts. Maybe you have a low thought. Maybe you have a low esteem. And maybe you have a low pursuit, a low height, moderate height. It says, that's not my thought for you. And the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my thoughts, my thoughts concerning you. My thoughts and my plan concerning you. It says so, and my thoughts for you. And it says, it's thoughts beyond your own thought. Above your own thought. It's thoughts will be fulfilled. And the rain comes down, and it waters the earth. It says, so is my word that I say it unto you. It will prosper in the things I've sent it. And then he tells us in Psalm 89. In Psalm 89, in verse 34, it said, The things I have said unto you, I will not alter. That he makes a covenant with you. He makes a provision for you. And he says, those high highs that he has called you to, that you are going to have, and you are going to achieve, and it is so in Jesus' name. If you say amen, I will not close the meeting. The amen is to confirm. It's a word of affirmation. The amen is a word of yes, so let it be. So when God says something about you, something great and something good and something wonderful, it's prophecy concerning you. It's promise unto you. And I repeat that to you. And I then say in Jesus' name, this will be done for you. Then you say, Amen. And it will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Pressing upward to higher highs. There are three things we're looking at as I talk about this. Number one, there is foundation. Number two, there is fortitude. Number three, there is fitness. Join those words together. Number one, there's a foundation. Anything you have in life, anything you do in life, your personal life, there has to be a foundation. Your educational life, there has to be a foundation. Your developing life, there has to be a foundation. And so we we'll start with foundation. You are going to build an edifice. You are going to build a mighty tower. You need the foundation for that building. And it is the foundation, how strong the foundation is, how weighty the foundation is, it is the foundation, how solid your foundation is that will tell us what you can build on that foundation. Number one is the foundation. Number two is the fortitude. I want to run. I need fortitude. I need energy. I need power. I need strength. We need fortification. I want to study. I want to be active enough, I want to be alive enough, and I want to be agile enough to give myself to that study. And I want to do something in life, a project in life that I've given myself to, I'm addressing myself to that. I need the power, I need the strength, I need the backbone. If I'm wumbling, if I'm tired, if I'm weary, I cannot build anything. I might have foundation. I might have a solid foundation. But for me to build a life on that foundation, I need fortification, fortitude, strength, power, energy to get that done. Number one is the foundation. Number two is the fortitude. And number three is the fitness. I cannot be, I should not be a lounge peg in a square hole or a square peg in a lounge hole. It will not stay firm. There must be fitness that you have a future, you're fitted for that. 
you have the goal, you're pitted for that. You have an accomplishment that you are aiming at. You are running after. There must be fitness for that. Three words, foundation, fortitude, fitness. And then I give you another uh, three words. I'm going to join them together. High, number one. If I'm low, at a low health. If I am low in my understanding, in my education, in my morals, in my spiritual life, if I'm aiming at the highest, I must first of all start with high, high. And then I build steps to that. And it says I build the small, small steps. The little, little things we do every day. And we build those steps and we, we get to the high, to the high heights. It wasn't like that last year. It wasn't like that five years ago. Where I am now in knowledge, in morals, in the spiritual, in understanding, going towards my goal. High heights. But then I'm not through yet. I have something beyond that, something greater than that. I must ambition that. I must think of that. I must plan that. I must project that. Then I go now to higher heights, higher heights. I don't run so fast and use my breath. I don't go so fast and have a goal that I ought to have in five years. I want to crush that and crush that and compound that into three months. No, I go step after step, day after day, event after event, and I do one thing at a time. And I do it well. And then I come to the next stage, higher heights. And when I get to the higher heights, yes, I praise God. Yes, I thank God. Yes, I give the glory to God because of the higher height. But I'm not through yet. You are going to the highest. Somebody there, I said, you are going to the highest. So I now make, I readjust my way. How did I make it to the high height? How did I make it to the higher heights? All that I've learned, all that I've gained in moving on a step at a time. All that I've learned in moving on a day at a time. All that I've learned in going up and up and up. And I got to the higher heights. Now, I'm going to bring everything into place so that I can get to the highest height. And we're journeying together. We're going to get to those highest heights made for your life, made for our life, made for his life, for everyone in Jesus' name. Let's join them together now. Number one is the foundation for a successful high height. Foundation. We lay the foundation and we're building the first story of our lives. We're building the first story of our project, of our profession, of our lifestyle, of the victory we're going to have. Number one is the foundation for a successful high height. Number two. Number two is the fortitude, actually. Past failures weaken us, but past successes strengthen us. When we have success in the past, to climb to the fourth story of the building, look at me. I got to the high height. I'm encouraged. I'm strengthened. I'm empowered. I'm energized. I am fortified. Because I reach that high height now. I have from the experience I got. I know I can get to the next level, to the higher height fortitude for sustaining higher heights. Fortitude. Some people take and they drop. 
somebody, some people come up and then they go down. But to sustain the higher heights, we have the experience, we have the calling, and we have the energy, the fortitude that we have the fortitude for sustaining higher heights. Now, what if I say that's enough? God says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts higher than your thoughts. And so God says, you won't stop there at the higher height. Now you go up again. And what level, level you have reached as you come here today and you are participating with us today here at the Alpha location and all over the world online. Whatever higher height you have already got, you are going to move forward today in Jesus' name. The fitness for securing our highest heights. The fitness. He makes us fit. He makes us to hold and to secure that highest of heights we're going to have. And I pray all these three levels, the Lord will hold your hand and the Lord will take you and take you there in Jesus' name. Did I hear the amen I was expecting? Number one is the foundation. Number one, the foundation for a successful high height. As sure as we have the foundation, we're going to have the grace, the strength, and the faith to move to that level. And where you are now, you will go a step higher, even this morning in Jesus' name. We're looking at the foundation for a successful high height. We're dividing this to three parts. Number one, there's the main foundation. The main foundation. Think of the builder. He wants to build a great edifice and he lays foundation. But I'm looking at the builder and I say, what foundation is that? It's the foundation for the kitchen area. I say, what foundation is that? It's the foundation for the bathroom area. And I say, how about the main foundation? The foundation for the whole house, yourself, your life your personality, who the Lord wants you to be. He wants you to have, number one, the main foundation. Number two, the moral foundation. The moral foundation, understand, uh, whatever I know in science, whatever I know in economics, whatever I know, and whatever strong foundation I have, for my personality and for my profession, if I do not have moral, moral foundation, the academic foundation is good, and the foundation for doing this and joining that and coupling that and creating that, the foundation is good. But if I do not have along with that the moral foundation, I'll be a misfit in life. Number one, the main foundation. Number two, the moral foundation. And number three, the mandated foundation. If you have a particular field to follow, a particular profession to follow, you see, all, all those professions, each of them, they have, apart from the foundations in other areas we need, we have, a mandated foundation that you must have in this area, in that area, before you can climb up and get up 
to that foundation that the Lord expects in your life and then you grow wings and fly and get to that place you ought to get there. And as I look at you today, I see people who are going to get there. I see people who will not stop until they get to that high foundation. Let's look at that one by one. We're looking at the main foundation. The main foundation. We're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. In life, if we're going to climb higher, we cannot climb higher in vacuum. There are no stairways there. And we want to get to the first floor. There's no way that is possible. We cannot jump to that high height. It's such a height. It's beyond where you are. And the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Depart from iniquity. I, I'm thinking of my life. I'm saying, uh, what if I remained uh, at a level where I was before as a child, playful? I need to depart from that. As a lie, you know, as a, as a child, maybe, maybe you heard my story before. Many, many years ago, my father would send me to school. And then I will go to school. I will answer present sir. And then while the teachers are looking this way or that way, I pack my things, I go out of school. And I didn't go home, I just was roaming about. A loafer will never have a loaf to satisfy his life. There's not that many loaf in, in life because he's loafing about and he's just perambulating about. He's not going to have what he ought to have in life. And then as a child, I was a kind of, you know, I wanted to go to my father because when my father discovered I, watching, I wasn't actually getting to school, he brought me back to the school. My father was a militant man. He's passed on to glory now. My father was a man that you say, in this my house, you will not do that. And then he took me to school and he said, he got to the headmaster and said, headmaster, when last did you see my boy in school? He said, actually, we'll be wanting to write to you because your boy will come to school and answer present, sir. And then in a few minutes, we don't know where he's gone again. And my father requested that he call the school assembly. And they called the school assembly. They called me forward. And my father told the headmaster, this primary school, standard one, 1951. And then he said, let them mount me on the back. And my father gave me thorough weeping on my buttocks. It's no more pinning me now, but that time it was serious. And uh, so he said he taught me a lesson. And I, in my reaction to that, wanted to teach him a lesson. I kept quiet. He said, you saw what happened? I said, yes, sir, daddy. And then, so if you allowed him to, I will not go to school. You can tell he was such a boy. I was stubborn when I was young. And then the following day, you're not going to school? I said, no, sir, no school. What do you want to do? I said, I'll be a farmer. All right, give me a cutlass. He had a farm. He sent me to his farm. And in his farm, he had planted yam, he had planted cocoa and all that. I cut all the branches and everything there uh, because I was trying to retaliate on my father. And then I came back. But tomorrow, I said, farm. 
I was going back to the farm. And, you know, it was like father and son were fighting. He was thinking about my future. I was thinking about no future. If I didn't repent of that, if I didn't come out of that, I would not be here today. All those things you're doing, all the truancy, and all the waywardness, and all the bad, bad reaction in life, everyone that names the name of the Lord, all those things will ruin us. All those things will destroy us. I was smoking to spite a mother that said, I must never find you with cigarette. Okay, mommy, exactly what that mommy said I should not do. I'm going to do that. And we think we're, we're behaving tough. We're, we're doing something. I'm now a guy. I'm now tough. And she will know that I will not listen to that. My boy. My daughter, if we continue like that, we'll get off ground and get to the high heights. And you are destined for the high heights. I said you are destined for the high heights. All those pranks were playing. All those evil things were due. All the things were due. We bold face and we say, I will. My brother, that doesn't hurt any other person but you. It will hurt your future. It will hurt your personality. It will hurt everything that is good in your life. Come and lay the main foundation. Say, Lord, I am sorry for all the other things I've been doing. And I thought it was just to make daddy unhappy. It's to make mommy unhappy. It's to make those teachers unhappy. You know, those teachers, when they give me assignment, and then I didn't do the assignment, I get back to the class. Show your assignment, show your assignment. I'm, I was waiting for them. And then I will show them an empty page of the exercise book. Where is the homework? Where is what you should have done? And I'm happy internally, I made him shout. No other student could make them shout like me. I make them angry. But it was for my life. If I didn't repent of that, if I didn't quit that kind of habit and that kind of life, I would not have been able to raise the main foundation when I got to high school. And I quickly found birds of the same feather, they flocked together. I quickly found the miscreants in school, in my class. I quickly found those who had no future, those who had no purpose, and those who had nothing they wanted to achieve. I quickly found them. We became friends. And we talk about teachers. We talk about his intonation. We talk about everything he was doing. And we looked down him and belittled him. He didn't hurt the teacher. He was a teacher already. He had a certificate already. He had his education already. It was hurting us. And class once, I didn't have anything to write about. Will you imagine? They used to put uh, mathematics into arithmetic, algebra, and uh, geometry. And then I saw that in, um, in algebra, I think I got 24%. And then in arithmetic, maybe 12% or something. And geometry, I got zero with a dot inside that cell. It didn't bother me. I just, you know, lapped it off with my friends. Lazy, idle, no future, nothing. But I woke up, you will wake up. I said, you will wake up. I needed the main foundation. I turned around. I said, pranks, no more. Lying, no more. Laziness, no more. And by 1958, I can still see myself in the class. I could still see the algebra uh, lecturer, teacher that came. 
and he gave us six sons. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I said, I'm not going to be like I was. And today, you will not be like you were. Give me good Ghana. Amen. And then I did, number one, I was serious. I never found myself so serious like that before. Not talk to that, not talk to that, not talk to that. And then I did number two, did number three, number four, number five, number six. And then we submitted our papers. And the teacher went and matched everything. I got everyone right. He gave 17 for each one. 17 times 3 will be 51. And then that times 2, making times 6 all together, is 102. And he left it like that. And uh, when he came to class to come and give us our papers, he gave all the other people their papers. And I was now waiting. I thought, Look at this new teacher. He was new. He came from the University of Ibada. And then I said, maybe he had blown it again. And then after the whole class sat down and they got all their papers, he called my name. And I stood up. He said, this boy is a mathematician. Anything eating up your hand, you cannot clap from that day. I knew the foundation, the main foundation of my life had been laid. And then I repented of my sin later and became born again. I'm calling you today, my son, my daughter, let's live the main foundation of your life, of your personality. All those who enjoy, all those things who enjoy, run here, run there, go here, and go there. Let's abandon them. Let's push them aside, and you will become an expert in the field you're choosing in Jesus' name. Number two, I'm looking at the moral foundation. The main foundation, if I want to be somebody in life, if I want to do something in life, foundation is very important. Now, I've laid the foundation in that important area of life in my studies. Now, I need the moral foundation. It tells us in Psalm 11, and we're looking at verse 3. Psalm 11, verse 3, the foundation, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundation of righteousness, of upright living, if that foundation is destroyed, and our young people today, they meet an older person, they don't even know how to say good morning, sir, good morning, madam. They don't know how to have that foundation of righteousness and respect at school in a community with elderly people and that foundation is being destroyed everywhere the foundation of gentleness and the foundation of patience and the foundation of going on our way and not having any evil to do in society the whole foundation of righteousness and uprightness destroyed and we are the leaders of tomorrow we're complaining about the leaders of today. We're saying there's corruption. You know why? Many of those people did not have the foundation, the foundation of righteousness and the foundation of uprightness. We're saying uh, everywhere there is crime. You know why? Because there's no foundation of right living, acceptable living, which you, if we're going to be different as the leaders of today and leaders of tomorrow we must come and lay 
the moral foundation. What's the moral foundation? It's the opposite of what I had been doing in the past. What you have been doing in the past and where you've been going in the past. The people say, you be a tough guy if you can begin to drink now. That's how they lose the moral foundation. They say you'll be a strong person. If you can begin to say no to what is right and do whatever you want to do, that's how to crush, that's how to make the moral foundation crumble. But when you come to Christ, who can be the great foundation in your life, you repent, you turn, and then you are transformed and your life is changed. And now you are following the path of righteousness. You're building, number one, the main foundation. Number two, you're building the moral foundation. I come to number three now. Number three, we're looking at the mandated, the mandated foundation. The mandated foundation. I, I want to, you know, give you an example you can understand. I talked about my foundation in mathematics, but now I'm not lecturing in any school. I'm not teaching maths in any school. Now I teach the Bible. Now I preach the word of God. And I must lay the mandated foundation. In mathematics, I did remedial learning. The things I didn't know before, if I was going to go on in that math, I need to go over all those things I missed when I was playing truancy. Now the same thing, the mandated foundation for your profession. The mandated foundation to your choice in life. The mandated, the mandated foundation to the career you have now. If I choose a career, there is a foundation that matches that career. There's something important. There's something indispensable. There's something you cannot do without in that profession. Check up. What is it? Look at the people that went before you in that profession and look at what they got and look at the foundation they had. Read the books. Consult the authors and see why they wrote what they wrote and they publish in the magazine and they pub publish in the journals and when you read and practice, practice, just learning you know, how to run, if I don't run, I won't be able to run. Just learning how to swim, if I don't practice, I'll not know what to do. There is a school there, this is illustration, a school there, and it's a school for swimmers. And they go to the class there, and they learn all about fishing, they learn all about swimming, and they learn what to do when a flood comes all in their head. But the river nearby, they never get to that river and practice in profession, in engineering, in medical science, in economics, in bookkeeping, in everything we have to do what we're learning. That is the mandated foundation for any of us wanting to move up. You're moving up. I am moving up. It will happen in Jesus' name. In Luke chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 28. Luke chapter 14, verse 28. For which of you, intending to build a tower seated not down first and counted the cost whether he have sufficient to finish it in verse 29 lest happily after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it all that behold begin to mock him in Bastachi saying this man began to build 
and was not able to finish. What you start, you will finish. What you will begin, you will end well. You will not be a dropout at school. I didn't hear a good amen. I go to school every morning, every week. After the only days, I go back there again. What's my goal? Just to go to school? Uh-uh. To finish. To finish. And to have the appropriate certificate that matches what I'm learning. You go to work, you come back, and you go every time, and you do the right thing. Let me say it this way. You dot every I. You cross every T. Why? I'm looking for promotion. I'm looking for finishing this level and going to that level. Any other thing I'm doing in life, and I do it every day, and I practice every day, and I accomplish every day, and I do what is right, and I'm improving every day. What's the goal? To finish. So that when I finish that level, I will get to the next level. You will get to the next level in Jesus' name. Number one is the main foundation. Number two is the moral foundation. Number three is the mandated foundation. Let's come to number two now. Already we have the foundation. And because of what we do, we're not sleeping every time. We're not roaming about every time. We're not playing every time. And we're not forgetting our future. We're going on to the future. And we're doing everything that is necessary in laying the foundation. Now we come to the fortification. The Lord will strengthen you. The Lord will empower you. I, I, I remember one of my classmates now, Sharp intelligent but every time we were to go for exam he'll fall sick he wasn't strong enough to take the exams he had prepared for but now I realized I didn't understand at that time he wasn't fortified to be able to stand and do what he needed to do I, I see some of uh, you know some of my students at that time very great upstairs in his brain but he had a particular attitude he says you all know how sharp i am and then i see even remember his name i remember where he was turned in the early evenings and he'll be playing guitar playing guitar is good but not when you are preparing for your work exam and the fellow you know he'll be, he'll be singing and smiling and those of us that were not as bright as himself we just pass him and we go to do what we needed to do i want to tell you that that young man he failed woefully he didn't fortify himself, improve on that brain. He thought he could make it without any fortification. Eventually, he struggled. He took the school search again, and he made it. And he was admitted into the university. I don't want to mention the university. Some people may identify him. And then again, as well, great brain. But he brought his guitar along and he was playing guitar. He was studying engineering and he could make it. I want to say again, he did not make it. I don't know where he is now, but you, I know where you are. You are on your path to success. You are on your path to the higher ground. But my sons and daughters, my friends, were most fortify ourselves. Number two, the fortitude for sustaining higher heights. Higher heights. Fortitude. We're looking at Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 2. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 2. It says, and he speak before the brethren and the army of Samaria and said, 
what do these feeble Jews do? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burnt? They were making jest of Nehemiah and the people that were building. You were building walls, you were building your life. You were building walls, you were building your family. They are building walls, you are building your profession. They were building walls, but you are building for your future. They made fun of them. But you succeeded, and you will succeed. Many people cannot bear criticism, opposition, making jest of them, jeering at them. They will call your names, bookworm. They will call you names. He wants to become a professor. They call you names. He wants to become a great professional. If Nebuchadnezzar listened to all those criticisms, he would not have done anything. If the builders were him, if they listened to all the criticisms, they would not have built anything. But thank God you were not listening to them. I told you I wanted a great amen. All those people that will put you down by the cheering, jesting, name calling, whatever, they will not stop you. You have the foresight. You have the fortitude, the fortification of the Lord himself. And it will make you finish in good time in Jesus name look at verse 6 there in verse 6 we're looking at this so built we the wall and it says and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof for the people had a mind to work for the people had a mind to work now that's what I need. That's what you need. The mind to work. The fortification comes from the inside. The energy comes from the inside. The foresight comes from the inside. The power comes from the inside. They had a mind to work. Let me say it this way. They had a mind to study. They had a mind to progress. They had the mind to build. They had the mind to go up. It begins with, my, with the mind. If my hand is not ready to write in the condition of my mind, if my eyes are not ready to read in the condition of my mind, if I cannot go and sit down in that corner and study and study in the condition of my mind, my mind is used to playing, playing football, playing games, and playing chess or whatever in the condition of my mind. And if you wake up today and you say, going this direction will not build anything in my life, I must go higher. Am I talking to anybody there? Anybody wanted to go higher? The condition of the mind. I have to have the mind. The art in mind to work. Three things we're looking at. Number one. Number one, we're looking at the former hindrances. The former hindrances. Number two, the fortifying habits. The fortifying habits. The habits that fortify me. The habits that strengthen me. The habits that make me to sit down. I could not sit down for 30 minutes to study before. But now, I need to have that mind. The habit that makes me to sit down for one hour or whatever time I need so that I can have a fortifying habits. Number three, the faithful helper.
Lord. Number one, the former hindrances. The former hindrances. Let's look at that. As we think about what hindered us in the past. First Peter chapter 1, verse 14. In First Peter chapter 1, verse 14, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves to your, according to the former lusts in your ignorance. Well, we were ignorant in the past. I was ignorant in the past. And because of that, I had some habits in the past that will not pass an exam. I had some habits in the past that will not allow me to come out in flying colors. I had some former associations that tended to playing, playing, playing. I had the former habits of not doing my own work at the right time. I had the former habits of procrastination. And when a little problem challenges there, and you procrastinate, by the time you come, the following day, that problem has increased, escalated. The problems, the challenges are little babies, like little babies. As you feed them, they grow stronger and stronger. But now those former habits we turn away from them. We cancel them. And we live in new strength, new lifestyle. Look at number two. Number two, we come. Number two, we're coming to the fortifying habits. We change from those former habits and hindrances, and we come to the fortifying habits. The habits that fortify us. And I wake up at the right time in the morning, and no mother comes to say, are you not getting up? Are you not preparing for school? Are you not preparing for work? The bad old habit has changed. A new habit has now come. And a new habit fortifies want the person that does that have the habit now of saying no to what will distract my attention and that's the new habit that fortifies us i have the habit now of listening not talking and talking and talking listening to the teachers and listening to the counselors and listening to the people that are giving good information for me to move on a new habit that fortifies you and you know habits like that thin threads the threads very small you can hear that or put another another string and put another string and put another string and to become a kind of thick thread and thick rope that you cannot break because now the good habits do them one each day you practice them one each day you go through them again one each day and as you wind them together they become so strong you cannot break them again we've got number one the former hindrances number two we've got the fortifying habits and now we have the faithful helper his name is jesus and it will help us. It will help us to overcome everything we need to overcome. It will help us to climb every mountain we need to climb. It will help us and heal us from any kind of disease that will stop our journey, will stop our climbing, will stop our progress. He is the Lord. He has promised he will do it. It will do it for everyone in Jesus' name. 
I said you will do it for everyone in Jesus name number three now number three is the fitness whatever we're going to do in life we need to be fitted for that by grace the grace of God by faith faith in the Lord by power heavenly power that comes upon us it makes us to be able to reach the highest of heights the fitness for securing for keeping for holding on to the highest heights we're looking at Romans chapter 14 reading from verse 17 it tells us there it says for the kingdom of God existence in that kingdom presence in that kingdom security in that kingdom abiding in that kingdom it says for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost all the different kinds of joy we need the Lord or grant unto us and a height we need to have highest of heights in a personal life in a family life highest of heights in a relational life highest of heights in our professional life highest of heights in everything we endeavor to be and to do and to accomplish what we are created for the Lord himself will take us to the highest of heights in Jesus name three things number one our fitness for high honors number two our fitness through hearty health number three our fitness for his holy heaven here in life he gives us high honors that will go beyond what we thought we could ever have here in life he gives us hearty health your heal and hearty your sound and there is no part of you that has any debilitating health challenge it keeps you healthy and then he also makes you feed for the holy heavens his grace is available his strength is available his power is available and he says i will help you he will help you higher heights he will help you healthy sound happy he will help you and get into heaven at last my father's house are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare prepare a place for you and when i go and prepare a place for you i will come and take you unto myself it forgives all your sins it grants you salvation and it gives you step by step and day after day to live in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of your life and then one day he comes and he takes you into heaven and heaven you will live in forever and ever in jesus name are you the one i'm talking to christ has come to you today and everything you need I'll grant unto you today where are you where are you let heaven see you there and let him come to you and make you fit fit to be and to do everything he created you to do. let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer and say Lord here I am here I am 
You are not a partial Christ, a partial Lord, a partial Savior, a partial healer, a partial developer, a partial creator. Help me, Lord. And he comes to help you. Open your mouth and pray to the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. Do your work in me. Lord has opened his heart unto us. It is time for us to talk back to God on all what we have heard. Pressing upward to higher heights. Open your mouth and talk to God. Remember, there is a need for foundation for a successful higher height. You need to be fitted. Open your mouth and talk to God in prayer. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Check up your foundation now. Are you standing on the solid rock? Remember, Christ is the solid rock, the solid foundation. How is your moral life? Are you moving the way of the multitude? All over. That you are following sin, Satan, and the world. It is time for you to withdraw from sin, from Satan, from the world. Remember? How a convener made us to see. I did not start well. He went away from God. But he came to himself. You can come to yourself today. You can look up to Christ today. If you see that you are moving with vagabonds. You are moving with people who don't have any goal, any purpose in life. The secret has been revealed unto you. You can repent. You say, Lord, I surrender. Lord, I forsake the sinful way, all the satanic ways. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, today. Open your mouth and talk to God. Lay a moral, good moral foundation which God has earmarked for you. The foundation of the law standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Any youth, any boy, any girl who named the name of the Lord must depart from iniquity. If you want to get to the higher height, this is the moment for you to take a decision to depart from iniquity. Depart from sin. Don't forget, a lover will never have a law to satisfy his life. You are just wandering about, loving about. You don't have a law to satisfy your life. But thank God, God loves you. Jesus loves you. 
No matter how far you have gone in your life, spiritually, you can make up your mind today and say, Lord, I surrender. I come to you. And God will forgive you all your sins, all your wickedness. And you can start with a new foundation of righteousness. A new foundation of holiness and purity that will really take you up to the higher high. Open your mouth and talk to God. Remember, you cannot have a shady, shaky foundation, a faulty foundation, and expect to have a better house, a solid house. Spiritually speaking, you need Jesus to be the foundation of your life. Repent, turn around, and say, Lord, enter into my heart. Right from the beginning of the message, Jesus was knocking at the heart of your, the door of your heart. And you need to surrender. You need to agree with him. You need to hand over your life to him. He's ready to take you on and take you to the higher highs you ought to be. Don't be a lazy person. Be diligent. Be studious. Read your books. Today, the temptation for the youth is so high. Watching of videos, sinful videos, using your phone. When your teacher is teaching you in the class, you need to make up your mind in this program. I'm no more going to do that. I'm going to be a serious student. I'm going to be a diligent student. Read your books. Consult others, authors. The library is there. The net is there. You can really search to get the best from the best authors. In everything we need to do. When we are learning, everything we are doing, remember, in everything we need to do, we have to learn. We have to learn. Remember the former hindrances. All the things that hindered your life and made you to be far away from success. Make you to be far away from victory. Make you to be far away from the boy, the girl, the man or woman the Lord wants you to be. Fortify yourself from all these bad habits. Jesus is a faithful helper. Is ready to help you to be fitted. To be fitted. To be the person you ought to be. To be the winner you ought to be. To be the overcomer you ought to be. So at this time, if you know that all what you have been living for all what you have been doing is keeping you away from reaching the higher high. You want to pray, make a decision. If you really want Jesus to be your Lord, the master, the director of your life, to hold your hands to the higher highs as you see yourself far away from him, can raise up your hand, say, Lord, here am I. 
I want to be in the company of people who are going to the higher highs. Every sinful thing, every satanic thing, every bad thing, I put a full stop to all those things. Just raise up your hand. As you surrender your life to Christ, who can hold your hands to where you ought to be, where God has a mark for you, where God wants to take you to. Raise up your hand to God and say, God, surrender my life unto you. I'm not going to remain in the camp of sin and Satan and the world. Others may, but I take decision today, I cannot. I want to pray with you. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for making us to see the way to the higher high. And wherever your children are, wherever you want to take them to, we give you the chance. As these have raised up their hands unto you, I am praying that you yourself will have mercy upon them. And whatever sins they have committed, right now they want to break relationship with sin and Satan. I pray you wash them with the blood of Jesus. Cleanse them from every sin and give them grace and forgiveness in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm praying that the decisions they are taking today will be permanent in their lives. It will draw them far, far away from sin and Satan in Jesus' name. Whatever the devil has done against them in the past, they have made up their minds to break away from Satan. I pray you accept them. I pray you receive them. I pray you made them your own in Jesus' name. All the sins they have confessed. You have given a promise for them in the Bible that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive them and to cleanse them from all unrighteousness. Lord, I pray that you fulfill your word in their lives in Jesus' name. From today, give them perfect hatred for sin. Lord, give them perfect hatred for sin. And when they see sin, whether in the secret or in the open, they will run away from sin as they run away from snake. Lord, make it so for them in Jesus' name. The power and the grace to live a life free from sin. As they have received Christ, I pray you give unto them. Lord, I pray you give unto them. As many as receive him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God. Lord, I pray the power will be given to all these people in Jesus' name. Do it for your honor. Do it for your glory. And do it for the fullness of joy for all the youth and the people who have gathered here in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you write their names in the book of life. And they will do nothing that will make their names to be erased out of that book. Lord, I pray you confirm it in Jesus' name. Whosoever cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. Make your promise good in their lives. As they have come to you, I pray you will never cast them out. Lord, I'm praying 
that from here, as they will be going back to put your word into practice, the grace to do it. Give it to every one of them in Jesus' name. All those who are having problems in their lives, I pray you remove the problems. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. So at this time, you take their particulars, take their names. After that, we are going to pray for them. Whatever problems they brought here, the Lord is going to remove everything. I said the Lord will remove everything. So please, the counselors and the leaders, make sure that all those who raise up their hands, please don't put down your hands. Just raise up your hand to collect the form and they, they will direct you to fill it. Make sure that you do it. Let's be quick. Let's be quick. You decided today for the Lord, make sure that you collect the form. Very, very necessary. And fill it. All the information on the form, be sure that you follow it and do justice to the information. Are the counselors doing it? Make sure that you give them the forms. Let them, the, let them fill the forms. Make sure you touch every area wherever the people are. And when you are through, please signify that you are true. Please, let's stand up and pray. Let's stand up as we pray. Close your eyes. you brought any problem, any sickness, or any challenge, as you are praying, you can put your hands wherever you have the problem, as we pray. I heavenly Father, we thank you so much for coming down to minister to your children. Thank you for the heart you have given to every one of them to receive from you. Lord, I'm praying that even as you have dealt with your spiritual problem of sin, the sickness of sin, the disease of sin, I bring all of them before you, dear Lord, that whatever physical problem they have with sickness or any disease, I command all such sicknesses and diseases to depart out of their bodies in Jesus' name. All you sicknesses in the bodies of the people, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Whatever the name of the sickness, the name of Jesus is higher than every sickness. At the name of Jesus, every knee of sickness, disease, 
must bow right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm praying that all those who are having challenges in their studies, even as you bless Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego at their own time in their study time, and they became the head and never the tail, I pray you do it for all these multitudes in Jesus' name. I pray you turn their failures into success. All the defeats into victory. All the fear of particular subjects in their studies, I command the spirit of fear to come out of them in Jesus' name. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Lord, I pray you do it for them in Jesus' name. All those who are having challenges with finances, I pray you bless their parents to be a blessing unto them. Lord, I'm asking that your name alone will be honored and glorified in every one of them in Jesus' name. From today, no more in the valley. It's on higher high. Lord, confirm it in Jesus' name. The needs they have, that is mentioned or not mentioned, I pray you supply every need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord, that you have done it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Please, I I. The servers should quickly serve them, give them their food, and after that, they can... two or three are gathered together in my name. There am I in the midst of them. And uh, those that have testimonies to give, uh, just move to the left-hand side of the pulpit. In fact, the area you saw us taking the testimonies. There were some of you that came out and were interviewed. So you need to come over there and then uh, see the overseers to deal with you because we will take time.